modern women don't get that men are natural providers. I understand the frustration of women because what they're saying is there's not a big pool of good men. That's a lie. That's well, not a, a that, lie. That is a That's lie. That's not a lie. Listen. What? There's not a lot of good men who want y'all. There's a lot of good men out there like they, where the good man at? Like they hiding under a rock or in a cave. They everywhere. They at the gas station. They at Costco. They at the bank. They walking right past you and you don't show up on their radar because of the way you are. They're gonna walk right by you. Your pretty face ain't gonna go too far because everybody's pretty. That's a prerequisite. So if that's all you got to offer, we're not looking at you. There's plenty of good men, they just don't want your ass. I ain't never heard no woman say, I know I ain't shit. She'll say, this man ain't shit, he ain't shit. He was bad, he was bad. Every woman think they're a good woman. What makes you a good woman? Who's auditing that you're a good woman? You are auditing yourself. Why don't you ask your exes what they think? Because all your relationships diminished and ended in, in turmoil. You so know, maybe you're not as good as you really think you, you are. You know, it isn't rocket science. Men are getting tired of being used as an early retirement plan by women who will leave for any little reason or no reason at all. Younger men have seen guys look at things like a romantic, then lose half their stuff for nothing, and live their lives in silent misery giving away their entire earnings month after month to some woman who wanted to go clubbing with a new guy every weekend. Why is it so hard to understand? Statistically, over 50% of marriages end in divorce within the first 10 years, leaving those men in debt, without a home, paying child support and alimony, essentially worse off than if they had stayed single. Most modern women lack wife skills and expect men to be providers and do half of the chores. The options are becoming a human ATM, miserable, and divorced, or staying single. The choice isn't difficult to make. Yeah, where are all the men, like the good, real men at? Where are you guys? I know, where are the men that like want to take you on a date? Like, like I don't hit, come in my DMs, right? please. I don't, I don't need dinner though. See, no. for, you know how some people like first date, they want dinner? I don't want dinner for the first date because I want to be able to talk without food in my mouth. Yeah, even like when guys just movies, mm -hmm. I'm like, why would I go to the movie theaters with you on a first date? No, exactly. Why? Like you and I sit go in the, the dark because we like, know each other now. But yeah, when we first met, no, I want to talk. All the good men got played, so now all they do is just work, scroll TikTok, chill, and ignore people. Tell me I'm wrong. I just walked into Abercrombie for the first time since middle school. Where are all the hot shirtless dudes? What happened to them? Why did we get rid of them? Okay, so serious question. If we're not going on dating apps for dates, where are we meeting men? And where are we meeting men in which we'd actually want to go on a date with? Where are all of the good guys? Can someone enlighten me? Because <laughs> whatever I'm doing isn't working. Women nowadays will literally be like, I can't find any good men. There are no good men left. And then they'll be like, I just need six feet about like six inches and like six figures. Even if this video was just meant for fun, it's still another case of men acting like women have impossible standards so that they feel better about themselves when they don't meet them. And it bothers me because these guys are acting like women are looking down on men who they would consider less than perfect. But have you ever heard a woman talk about a bum who she's in love with? Cause she'll make every excuse in the world for why that man is incredible and just misunderstood. So let's say for example, that a man has no job. She's not gonna let you sit there and call him unemployed. No, she's gonna tell you how it's probably because no one ever encouraged him and that he's gonna be able to do anything he sets his mind to once she just believes in him. You're acting like women will only date men who make six figures, but I know women who are working two jobs with full insurance and a 401k who are dating men with 60 cents in their bank account because she thinks he has potential. I don't know how you can act like women will only settle for rich men anyways when most families are living paycheck to paycheck and can't survive on one income because I think that means they married for love. And don't even get me started on what's between the legs because there are women in 30 year marriages who have never successfully had a no and you're gonna act like women are out here throwing the whole man away because of his size? Cause I don't think so. In fact, there are women out here faking O's so that the men in their lives don't feel inadequate and yet you're gonna act like we're out here bringing measuring tapes to our coffee dates? And sure, when it comes to height, maybe some women do have a preference for men who can reach the top shelf for the cookie jar, but that's all subject to change. If he's a good man with good qualities, then she may just fall in love and try to convert the whole world talking about how we love a short king. Listen, the truth is that even you don't believe this nonsense because if you really believed that women had impossible standards and you wouldn't be telling them to pick better men at every opportunity. So when I see videos like this, I realize that they're usually not mad about what women want. They're just mad that- The younger men and the real good men are watching what's happening to older men and they don't want to be next. Then there's the endless insults on social media, TikTok in particular. 
Personally, I got endless rejection and smirks, and the occasional public humiliation, just for showing interest in a woman. After staying single, for nearly a decade, I met a foreign woman. It was like night and day. My now foreign wife is just a better woman who is not brainwashed by feminism as it is currently being practiced today. A lot of the jobs that young men used to have as on-ramps into the middle class were generally industries that over-index male, manufacturing, frontline work. Those jobs have been outsourced overseas. In addition, once we leveled the playing field academically, women just blew by men. Women are more mm. mature, they're more disciplined, they're better at delaying gratification. And over the next five years, we're gonna have two women graduate from college from every one man. So what we have mm. is an entire cohort of what I call emotionally and economically unviable men. And mm. so women are leveling up and it's great, but they're not interested in the men our society is producing right now. And the most violent, unstable societies in the world all have too many of the same thing. And that is a broke and lonely young man. And we are producing too many of them. In today's day and age, men have to pay massive fees in order to even acquire a woman. That in and of itself carries major risk, because the man could lose all of the investment at any time. Then, should the relationship ever go south, he has to then pay massive fees to get out of the relationship. So the thing that's wrong here is that men have to pay up at the beginning, and then they get sold out at the end by the woman which can happen at any time. And women wonder why men aren't even engaging them anymore. Number of young single men in America is at a record high. This is why. It's because of dating apps. So it might not actually be just dating apps. Let's talk about it. The Pew Research Center found that 60% of men below the age of 30 say they're single. And for context, only 30% of women in that same age range say that they're single. Psychology Today actually wrote an article about this. They did a bunch of interviews with experts and there's a few reasons why so many young men are single. One of the big things is the pandemic. During the pandemic, a lot of younger women refocused their priorities. They focused more on education, career, and finances. And they basically deprioritized dating. And because of this, the theory goes that some men have had a hard time finding women to date. However, there's another theory that younger men just don't want to compete in the dating world. And instead, they're getting a lot of their needs from the internet. I've actually met a lot of young people who don't want to date, and I want to know, have you noticed this pattern? Let me know in the comments. More than 60% of young men in America are single, which is nearly twice the rate of unattached young women, pointing to a breakdown in the social, romantic, and sexual life of American men. This trend is particularly prevalent among men in their 20s who are more likely to be romantically uninvolved, sexually dormant, friendless, and lonely. The reason why young men aren't having segs or looking for relationships has nothing to do with desire. The problem is that 80% of young women are convinced they are too good for most men and deserve the best looking 20% of young men. Worse still, those chads will sleep with those 80% for fun, which reinforces 80% of young women's views. So 80% of young men are left with the 20% of less attractive women for whom most aren't interested. Eventually, as they get older, 80% of women settle for a man outside of the 20% most attractive, but they don't love them, always feel that they have done and therefore can do better, get bored, unhappy, and leave. Taking 50% to 80% of the man's assets, along with ongoing child support and alimony, those men in the top 20% rarely marry, or if they do, they are the minority of men who leave their wives. After all, they had their pick before, and during their marriage, as women are even more attracted to them once they are married. It didn't feel nice to be in the bottom 80% of men or the bottom 20% of women. The consequences of failed relationships, marriages, or even bad associations with women have harsh financial, psychological, and emotional consequences for men. As men and boys become more aware of this, the reluctant men will be to commit to relationships or even interact alone with women. We now have generations of younger men who not only witnessed for decades how their fathers, grandfathers, or men and boys in general were and are mistreated, but who themselves had, right from kindergarten, to deal with a massive amount of discrimination, slandering, shunning, and with politics, a society, and media who see them as disposable tools in the best case and as inherently dangerous, unhinged, and violent in the worst. So what would women in society think would happen? How would they think generations of young men would react to a society that is utterly hostile to them? The question of why young men retreat from dating and a gynocentric society 
is either hilariously naive or the epitome of hypocrisy. Thing is, women don't understand how many men actually don't mind providing for them and how many men want a serious, committed relationship. But where are all the good men? They're just waiting for a woman who's worth providing for. So what's happening? Young guys are tired of not being able to find the right women their age because the women their age are just dating older. They're just dating men that are in their early 30s that maybe are more financially stable or more mature. Maybe they're more stable in their careers. They finish their degrees. They've started paying off their student loans. They've got a mortgage or, you know, a car or whatever the case is. To a lot of women, that is very appealing and attractive. A lot of the studies have shown that on average, women still want men who are making as much of them, if not more. And the emphasis there is on the if, not more. It turns out that since 2019, the share of single men who say they're looking for dates or relationships has declined from 61% to 50%. In 2018, 28% of men ages 18 to 30 reported they'd had no physical relations in the past year, compared with 18% of women of that age. For me, the primary reason is the power imbalance that exists in the dating market. It's made clear with statistics on dating apps such as the likelihood of getting a match. It's much higher if you are a woman instead of a man. Men are the seekers, the pursuers, the chasers. So naturally, the access, so to speak, is controlled by women. They can afford to be pickier than men when selecting their partner in the online dating context, of course. But I'd imagine this also extends to real life as well. I also think it's about perceived social values. As a man, your attractiveness will probably take a bigger hit if you are a failure socially, financially, etc., than if you are a woman. In the current state of things where many young people in general feel a little lost, are possibly lonely or just failing at life, men are going to suffer slightly more from that in the dating market, because a bigger part of men's attractiveness to women is in relation to those things than it is the other way around. From what I can see, women consider breaking even in a relationship as a loss. If a woman can't get a man that can do more than her and have more than her, then there's no reason to be with him for anything other than a pastime. It seems that only once women experience truly overwhelming desperation will that mindset change. So as a young man, you really can't consider any physical relationship as anything other than transactional. It really feels like doing anything else with your life would be better than pining for the delusion of romance. So, as women are starting to make more and more money, their expectation and what they want in a partner is that that person still out-earns them. That person is still somebody who is able to provide more than them in some capacity, and this I think is really impacting young men. Because if you're a woman who comes out of college, you have a college degree, maybe you get a job or at a college, you're making 50, 60 grand. You're looking around at the men that you went to college with, or you know, maybe you're looking at the men on Tinder and Bumble and Hinge or whatever. You know the platform you're on, first and foremost, you're starting to see that fewer men have a college degree. So suddenly, for women who have a college degree who prefer men that have one as well, something like 70 to 80% of women who have college degrees will not or don't want to date men without a college degree. As you have this rising rate of men who are not graduating college, who are not even going to college, and you have this ballooning number of women that are going to college and graduating from college because it's now flipped, right? It's like the vast majority of college graduates are women. It's only like 41 or 42% of college graduates are now men. And so, that's inverse from what it was in the 1960s and 70s. In the 1960s and 70s, it was the opposite of that. It was only 41 or 42 of women that were graduating with a college degree. So now it's switched, and fewer men are going to college than ever before, and fewer men are getting college degrees. So, art of the challenge that's emerging within the dating market is that in terms of women's selection preferences, what they're looking for in a man and in a mate, that pool is shrinking. Here's a thought. Men aren't only not dating and not finding partners, but we are failing to build close friendships with other men and in-person social networks that women are attracted to. Ignore the career-chasing women. They're a lost cause if they elevate that above marriage, but most women are drawn to men with good social standing who are respected in their social circle. They're social creatures. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.